Well, hello, everybody. I greet you in the name that is above every name that is named, Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. I'm Apostle David Brown of Living Word Ministries in Baltimore, Maryland. I wanted to come and share with you uh, today from the subject to tithe or not to tithe. That is the question. To tithe or not to tithe. That is the question. There has risen a controversy uh, in the land concerning tithing, and I want to address that and share with you what God has impressed in my spirit and on my heart. Now, let me preface my remarks by saying this. My words are not out of any animus or anger with anyone or at anyone. I want to try to... Uh, bring a statement to you as a man of God out of my sense of responsibility, the responsibility that I have as a leader in the kingdom of God and to uh, add my voice on the matter for the sake of the people of God who look to me for leadership. And so I've been in ministry now over 40 years of continuous ministry, four decades of continuous ministry. 38 of those years have been pastoring and covering the church I founded in 1983, Living Word Christian Center, now known simply as Living Word Ministries. So we want to get into that today and just share with you from my heart. Concerning the tithe or the tenth. That's what tithe means, a tenth. A tithe is a tenth. Now, there are uh, some who take the position that the tithe was a Levitical institution established under the law of Moses, and uh, it's not to be practiced under the dispensation of grace where we now function as a body of believers under the new covenant. But history, follow me very carefully now, confirms the fact that tithing has been and is now not a law, but it is a principle. Let me say that again. Tithing is not a law, it is a principle. Now, what's the difference between a law and a principle? A law is a rule that is to be enforced by imposing a penalty. A law is a rule that is enforced by imposing a penalty, just like the laws of our land. Whereas a principle is a fundamental truth. It is a fundamental truth. So tithing is the principle of acknowledging God as a greater influence over your life and mine than the spirit of mammon. Let me say that again. Tithing is the principle of acknowledging God as a greater influence over your life than the spirit of mammon. There's only two gods in this world. That's the God, the creator of the universe, and then mammon. The word of God says that no man can serve two masters. It's either going to be God or mammon or the spirit of commerce, money. So the first time as we look in scripture that the principle of tithing is mentioned is in Genesis chapter 14 when Abraham, listen, gave tithes to Melchizedek. Genesis chapter 14, Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek. 430 years before Moses was given the law. Did you hear that? 430 years four centuries and 30 years before Moses ever heard of it. 
Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek. And it wasn't uh, vegetables. It wasn't wheat. As some people say that uh, Leviticus and Malachi is talking about mandating. Abraham gave tithes of the spoils of war. He had just won battle and he received the spoils of war and he gave 10% to the priest of God, Melchizedek, once again, 430 years before the law. So you can't say that the uh, tithing is concocted out of the law. No, tithing was before the law, predates the law by 400 in 30 years. Now we get to the book of Malachi. Malachi asked the question, will a man rob God? Will a man rob God? Well, the answer is a resounding yes. Absolutely. Affirmatively. Positively. People will rob God. Yes, they'll do it. But what is it? What is, what is robbing God? What are you doing when you're robbing God? What are you robbing God of? The Bible says the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof. The earth belongs to God and everything in it. So how can you and I rob God of anything when he owns it all? You're robbing God of extending to you the corresponding return on your financial investment into the kingdom. That's how we rob God. We rob God of the opportunity to extend to us the corresponding return, the harvest, if you please, from you sowing the seed of tithe into the kingdom of God. Are you listening to me? So it's not by compulsion. New Covenant teaches us we're not to give by force. We're not to give because somebody is making us do it. So tithing is not by compulsion. It's never mandatory. It's never to be intimidating. If I ever feel intimidated, if I, if I ever felt in a service where I was being uh, made, made mandatory to give anything, I wouldn't give anything, nothing. I, I'll give you nothing. If somebody came in the pulpit and tried to put by force on me and make me come and give something, I'm not giving you anything. But let me tell you how the tithe is defined in Scripture. Here's how the tithe is defined. You're not, you're not going to be made to do it. It's not mandatory. It's not supposed to be intimidating. But listen to how the Word of God defines what the tithe is. It says, the tithe is the Lord's. Let me say that again. It says the tithe is the Lord's. It doesn't say the tithe was the Lord's. It says the tithe is the Lord's. And there's no expiration date on the tithe being the Lord's. No expiration date. doesn't say, well... By the time of the end of this, it won't be the Lord's anymore. It, it can be yours. Do with it what you want. No, it doesn't say that. It says the tithe is the Lord's. So that's what it is. The tithe is the Lord's. And listen, you're given a promise that when you tithe, remember a tithe is a tenth. When you tithe, the Bible says the devourer is rebuked. The devourer the destroyer, whatever is eating up your finances, whatever is destroying your money, whatever is stealing income and resources out of your life is rebuked by God himself for the tither. Glory to God. That's a great promise. So tithing is a principle with a promise. That's enough to get anybody excited over it. Now listen. The Bible says that Jesus, when he hung on the cross, took the curse 
of the law on himself on our behalf. Therefore, because Jesus became a curse for us through his sacrifice on the cross, the curse of Deuteronomy 28 is removed from the life of the believer. The curse is removed from the life of the believer. Somebody give God a shout right there. The curse is removed because of the sacrifice and the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus canceled the curse. So the curse portion of Deuteronomy 28 has been removed from the life of the believer. Galatians 3.13 says it this way. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. And so anybody preaching or anybody ministering or anybody threatening you with a curse, you just tell them, no, uh -uh, I don't receive that. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law when he became a curse for us on Calvary. Don't let, any, don't let anybody try to put a curse on you. God has declared that you are blessed and nobody can curse what God has blessed. You are blessed to the glory of God the Father. So the curse is removed. Listen, but the principle of the blessing of obedience in tithing remains. The curse has been removed, but the blessing of obedience to the principle of tithing still remains in your life. That's enough to give God some praise right there. Now, I told you, I've been pastoring about 38 years, almost 40 years, quickly approaching 40 years. I've been in ministry over 40 years as a Sunday school superintendent, as an associate pastor, uh, pastoring much. I've been in ministry over 40 years altogether. And listen to me. We've never seen 100% of the people tithing. Never. In the almost four decades, over four decades that I've been in ministry and almost four decades that I've been pastoring, we have never seen 100% of the people obeying the principle of tithing. Never. Never. And, and follow me now. The people who were not tithing never, never, never gave more than a tenth. The people who were not tithing, they never gave more than the tenth. They always gave less than a tenth, far less than a tenth of their regular increase that was coming to their lives financially. Nobody ever gave more. Nobody. Are you listening to me? And I'd venture to say to you that most of the same people who complain about having a church ask them for a tithe, I would venture to tell you that these same people would have no problem whatsoever paying 15 to 20% or more at a nice restaurant to the waiter or their server for taking care of their table. Boy, they'd pull out that 10, they pull out that 15%, they'd pull out that 20%. And sometimes when you have a table of five or more, most restaurants will take the 18%, whether you had planned to give it to them or not. And most people don't have any problem with that. They're, they're happy to pay 15, 20, 25. We hardly ever go to a restaurant and never pay the server at least 20%. Do you think I'm going to come to a restaurant and eat and pay 20% and then come to God's house and give God less than I give a server or a waiter? Come on. Are you listening to me? What value do you place on the kingdom? What value do you place on the house of God? What value do you place on the man or woman of God delivering and ministering the word of God to you that will deliver your soul? What value do you place on that? God put in a system 
to put a principle to work for you. I'm going to say, well, God doesn't need my money. No, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. But ministry costs money. Ministry costs money. Television time costs money. Radio time costs money. Church costs, just like anything else. If anybody else on the planet asks us for money, we never have a problem with it. Never. Nobody ever complains. Well, all Coca-Cola wants is my money. That's all they ask for. Money, 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 money. Can't go get a free coat. They always want money. Insurance company always wanting my money. That's all they want is my money. Uh, 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 Jack in a box restaurant. That's all they want. All they want is my money. I want to send my kids to a private school. All they want is my money. The only place anybody ever complains about money is when it comes to the house of God. And that is the place of your deliverance. That is the place where you get your spiritual feeding from a man or woman of God. If you ever were going to give money to anybody, the church ought to be the place to give it. Amen. Amen. So, never forget that everything you have came from God. Every good and perfect gift cometh from the Father above. Every good thing that happens into your life can be attributed to God. Everything we have belongs to God. The whole 100% of all of our money belongs to God. See if you're going to take any with you. See if you're going to take any, any, any money with you. Will anybody put any cash in your casket? I doubt it. You can't take it with you. You came into the world with nothing. We're going to go out of the world with nothing. But while we're here, we have an obligation to finance the work of ministry, to finance the kingdom, to finance and pay for the propagation of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the way he set it up to be paid for is through tithes and offerings. A systematic gauge for regularly acknowledging God is above mammon in your life. That's the only way you can get rid of greed if God has control of your money, he has control of your life. If God has control of your money, he has control of your life. Are you listening to me? Let me tell you something. There's a couple of examples that's in our own country. There's a family called the Green family. Very wealthy, crazy, crazy rich family. The Green family. The Green family owns the Hobby Lobby stores. You ever heard of the Hobby Lobby? Big orange sign, Hobby Lobby. They're owned by a very, very extremely wealthy family called the Greens. One of the reasons why they are so wealthy, not just because they have good business practices, and they do, but one of the reasons why they're super wealthy is because you guessed it. They're tithers. They give 10% of all of their increase into the kingdom of God. How many of you have ever heard of the Museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C.? It's a part of the Smithsonian Institute of Museums. Miles and miles of first world-class museums in our nation's capital and right as a part of that enclave of museums is the Museum of the Bible. Do you know who mostly funded the Museum of the Bible? You guessed it. Hobby Lobby owners, the Greens. Tithers! We can name organization after organization, individual after individual, person after person, tithers, 
people who simply obey the principle, not a law, you don't have to do it, but the principle of tithing into the kingdom of God, the work of the Lord, ministry. Do you think you can convince the Greens to stop tithing? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. How about Chick-fil-A? Chick-fil-A is owned by people who love God, serve God, and are in church as regularly as they can be. They participate in ministry and they tithe off of Chick-fil-A income. Do you realize Chick-fil-A is one of the most successful businesses in America? Do you know that there are church people who are angry today because Chick-fil-A isn't open on Sundays? <laughs> they can't go to Chick-fil-A after church because the owners of Chick-fil-A feel, whether you believe in them politically or agree with them politically, that's here or there. They tithe. And they not only tithe, they determine that the people who work for them should have the opportunity to go to church and worship on Sundays. And so they close on Sunday. One, one of the most lucrative businesses in America. And they could be making a lot more if they decided they just want to open on Sundays. They, they, just, they just have it in their heart. Let the people have a day off. And whether they go or not, it's up to them. But they, they are given the opportunity for them and their family to go and gather in the house of God and worship God. Do you think you can convince the owner of Chick-fil-A to stop tithing? It's not going to happen. My pastor, for many, many years before he went on to be with the Lord back in the uh, late 90s, Archbishop Benson Itahosa of Benin City, Nigeria, West Africa. One of my mentors, one of my former pastors, one of my spiritual leaders in the kingdom of God. He shared with me one time, shared with the whole church, how grateful he was to be used of God, how grateful he was to walk in a calling from God to minister the word, how grateful he was for the manifestation of the goodness of God in his life. Now watch this. When he was a young preacher, when he was a young preacher, he decided that every time he was blessed financially, he would give God, listen, 90% and live off of 10%. That's the commitment he made to God. He said, God, if you'll bless me, I'm going to give you 90% of my income and live off the 10%. He said he shared that with his wife. He went to Dr. Margaret, the host of his wife, and said what God, what God put in his heart to do. And she said this. She said, ask God to kill us. Tell him to kill us. How can we do it? We cannot live on 10%. But he had heard from God for his life. I'm not telling you to do that. You can't just do something what somebody else does, expect the same thing. That's what he felt led to do in his life. To give God, not 10%, but to give God 90% and live off of 10%. He did that until the day he went on to be with the Lord. And I'm telling you, he was one of the most blessed men in all of Nigeria. He lived in one of the finest homes in all of Nigeria. He dressed in some of the finest clothing that anybody on earth could enjoy. He had a beautiful church, a beautiful school, a university, and on and on and on. He decided, I'm not going to be intimidated, giving 10% and getting mad and saying, oh, what the church need with my money? Why they got to have 10%? Why 
Why are they trying to steal from me? Look like them preachers, all they interested in is your money. Yang, 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 on and on and on. You know what he did? He says, God, I'm not only going to give you 10%, I'm going to give you, it's not for everybody. Most people's faith, nowhere near that. People having a fit for 10%. Can you imagine if God asked for 90? If I were God, I may have asked for 90. Let you keep 10. But the generosity of our God said, the tithe is mine. Show me that you have conquered money. Show me that the spirit of mammon is stronger, a stronger influence over your life. And I'll bless you for it. He says, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. If you had no other promise except for having the devourer rebuked, that's promise enough to be obedient to the principle of tithing. Now, let me tell you, whatever your, your pastor tells you to do, if that's what you feel led to do, then go ahead and do that. If that's how you feel led, follow your pastor. Follow your pastor. I'm, I'm telling you what God is convicting me of and what I'm sharing with the people who look to me as their apostle and their leader, people who look to me as a voice into their lives in the realm of the spirit. That's what we're going to do. I'm not mad at anybody at what they do. I'm just clarifying what I'm going to do and what our churches are going to do. It's a matter of personal conviction. It's a matter of your individual personal conscience. It's up to you. It's up to you. Tithing is a principle of liberality and generosity. That's what God is trying to establish in your life. A consistent lifestyle of liberality and generosity. Tithing and giving. That the world might know that you have conquered greed. The Bible says where your treasure is, your money, that's where your heart is going to be also. Can I say that again? Where your money is, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is going to be. If your heart is not in it, don't do it. Don't do it. If your heart is not in it, then put your treasure wherever your heart is. Never forced, never out of obligation, never out of compulsion, but out of obedience to a principle established by God. I'm going to wrap it up right here. We asked in our church for years, we asked the people, to tithe. And here's what we added to it. We said, listen, if you tithe for one full year, just one full year, because that's the only place in scripture where God says, you can prove me, prove me, do it. And I'll show you who I am. We said, I want you to tithe for one year. And if you tithe for one year and you don't experience a positive change in your life financially, bring us the receipts for your one year of tithing and we will pay you every penny back. Tithe for one year and if you don't see a significant change in your financial life, bring us the receipts that you tithed faithfully and consistently for one year and we will give you back your tithe. We have never had a taker on that offer in almost 40 years. Let me say that again. We have never had a taker on that offer for 40 years. Not one. Not one, not one.
because people are always looking for an excuse, looking for a reason not to give. You don't have to find an excuse or a reason. You don't have to give by compulsion. Nobody's making you. I'm not going to stop you from coming to church because you don't tithe. I don't say don't watch my program if you're not tithing. Don't do it. Don't do it. And I'll tell you, everybody I've ever known in my church that was mad over tithing, wasn't tithing, didn't want to tithe, they weren't blessed. There was no manifestation of financial blessing in their life. Not one. So here's my solution. If you honestly and sincerely believe that tithing is under the law and you are under grace, if you believe you are now under grace, then give like you're under grace. Give as if you're under grace. Grace is a better covenant based on better promises. Hebrews 8 and 6 says, but now hath he obtained, he Jesus, has obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. That's grace. Grace is a better covenant, listen, and established upon better promises. So let's keep it simple and let's be real honest. The only thing that is better than a tenth is an eleventh or more. Okay, all of you grace people, thank God. I'm a grace man. I love the grace message. Thank God for it. So if you're under grace, the only thing better than ten is eleven or more. So let your giving reflect that you're under grace. Don't tell me you're under grace. And then come nickeling and diming God. Can't have it both ways. Make up your mind. I'm not mad at you. I'm just preaching. Bringing some clarification to my perspective as a man of God concerning the tithe. Let me close with this. Several years ago, I have a friend in New York. You may know him, Bishop E. Bernard Jordan. During one of his conferences, he set up a labyrinth. It was sort of like a large carpet made into a form of a, lab, a labyrinth where you could walk around it, meditate and pray. Walk around the labyrinth, meditate and pray. And I'm telling you, if the religious community didn't go bonkers, they almost lost it. I was there. I walked around that labyrinth. I lifted my hands. I prayed in tongues. I prayed in the, in the understanding. I had a good old time on the labyrinth. But I'm telling you, the religious folk went crazy. That pharisaical spirit rose up in them so strong. They were getting mad. What is he doing? What's going on? Just went on and on and on, just like this controversy over the, the tide. It was ridiculous. It was a labyrinth. You walk around, you meditate, and you pray. Bishop William McKinley, another well respected father in the faith from New York. He showed up at the conference and he made this statement in regard to the controversy. It was like Joshua and Caleb who quieted the people after the 10 spies stirred up everybody with an evil report. Talking about giants are in the land, we'd be like grasshoppers. Remember that? Joshua and Caleb came in with a good report and quieted the people. Bishop William McKinley came into that conference, heard about all the controversy over the labyrinth, and quieted the people with these words. Here's what he said. He said, if scripture does not forbid it, then 
it is allowed. <laughs> Glory to God. Simple yet profound revelation. If scripture doesn't forbid it, then it is allowed. Let me say that again. If scripture does not forbid it, then it is allowed. Regardless of how you feel about the tithing question. If you can't find anywhere in scripture where tithing is forbidden, then it's allowed. Hallelujah. If you don't want to participate, it's your personal decision. Make up your mind. According to what we shared from God's word, I believe you'll be blessed. I believe whichever way you go, tithe or not tithe, you're still going to go to heaven. We're all going to go to heaven. But for me and my house, we're going to obey the Lord. Let's pray. And so, Father, thank you for the tithing principle. Thank you, God, for giving us the opportunity to fund the kingdom. And we receive the corresponding return on our investment in the kingdom. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold according to our faith. And we praise you for that. We thank you for that. We glorify you for that. In Jesus' name, and all in agreement said... Amen. Don't forget to like, share, let other people know what we share today, and let them be blessed by it also. God bless you, and bye-bye for now.